Let's talk about progressive web apps, or PWAS. Never say PWAS out loud in front of people. That's not really a thing. That's, that's just how I refer to them. A PWAS is a combination of a couple different bits of standard web tech with the idea of making your web app function more like a native app on mobile devices. And it, the benefits are primarily three things. It'll prompt users to install, which really means putting an icon on their home screen. It can do offline caching, so in theory your site will keep working even when they're not on the network. And it can do push notifications. So on a regular native app, you'll see a notification like a calendar event or whatever. You can make those kind of notifications too for your PWA. So it acts a lot more like a native app. I've been giving PWAs the stink eye for a long time. For one, two, for three reasons, really. One, service workers are still an evolving spec, so it's still a bit of a mess there, which is no fun. You don't only have to check whether service worker is supported, you have to check whether particular methods in service worker are supported. Uh, browser support is shite. It's not good. You're basically looking at Chrome and Firefox. No IE or Edge, which isn't that big a deal, but no Safari, and that is a big deal because that means this PWA experience isn't going to be happening for anybody using an Apple device, which in the US at least is, is a fair number. But as it turns out, I've gotten into it a little bit and adding PWA to your existing application is really not hard at all. And there are some legitimate benefits to it. I thought I'd take a quick look at how I'm adding that to GeoPortal. It's not out live yet because I'm still playing with it. But we'll take a look at the code and it's, it's pretty straightforward. To be a, a PWA, you need three things. You need a manifest file, a, uh, you need to register a service worker, and the whole thing has to be HTTPS. So if you're on HTTP with your site, uh, you're not doing any PWA stuff. But if you're not HTTPS on your main site, you're, you're heading in that direction whether you know it or not. So, so you're, you're going to get there. Now when you're developing over localhost, it doesn't have to be HTTPS. It'll still work for testing over localhost. So let's take a look here at this stuff. First thing you need is a manifest file. And this is a JSON file. I used to do it in your HTML file for Chrome is you'd have a meta tag with mobile web app capable and you'd say, yeah, and then you'd give it an icon and that's all you'd need to add to the home screen. Well, manifest file takes the place of that and it's just a straightforward JSON file with particular keys and values. It has a name and a short name and the short name is what will go under your icon. So you can have the really long government name and then the short name can just be bleh, so it'll fit. You need an icon and it can be more than one at different resolutions. Start URL and the display type can be standalone, full screen, and I think there's a minimal UI one now if I'm not mistaken. And background color and theme color are what it does for you when it loads. The only three things you have to have in there are an icon that's 144 pixels square or larger, the start URL, and the short name. The other stuff is optional. And when you pull up your site to check it out, where you see all the PWA related stuff is under the application tab in Chrome DevTools. And you can look under manifest and you'll see it's loaded that manifest file. It'll show you your icons and colors and names and, and all that happy stuff. So that's easy, that's pretty straightforward. The second thing you need to do is register a service worker. And that is also very easy. And when I'm talking service worker here and easy, I'm talking, I'm not doing any of the push stuff. The push stuff is, is crazy magic I haven't touched yet. But to register a service worker, you'll check whether service worker is in the navigator or not. If it's not in that object, 
then you're not doing plus. And this is what will weed out Safari and IE and Edge. But if it is, it'll just register a service worker, which is a JavaScript file on your server. And that's it. You've got a PLA. Now, what does that service worker look like? And that's the interesting thing. It can look like this. A completely empty file, which kind of blew my mind at first. You can register a service worker with an empty file. And what that gives you is it will prompt to install. It just won't do any do any offline caching, and of course it won't do push notifications. But you can register an empty JavaScript file and get the benefit of having it prompt to install. So just three lines of code and a manifest file and an empty file, and you're good. You got the prompt to install functionality in your PAW up and running. So let's look at offline caching. First, let's go back over here and you can see, let me reload this. One thing I will say is debugging uh, your PWA is a little tricky, especially if you're doing offline caching because things can kind of get stuck and it doesn't always respond to a live reload event. So it's, it's, it's a little strange. Like now I just reloaded this page and it's saying no manifest detected. But if I reload the dev tools, it's got a manifest. So the dev tools are even a little weird on service workers. Sometimes you have to close them and open them to see what's really going on. So we've got our manifest and you see it's registered our service worker under service worker and cache storage. Now that shouldn't be, let me try to reload this again and see if that goes away. Yeah, I think that's gone away now. So now if we go offline, reload the page you see we got the dinosaur because we haven't done any offline caching now for offline caching we're gonna have to put something in that service worker file and lucky for us the nice folks at Google have made a node module called sw precache and what that does and I've got it in my build step here is SW precache, you can give it a folder and you can give it a list of file extensions or files to precache. And if you don't give it any file extensions to look for, it'll try to precache everything. But since I have some .map files for JavaScript uh, and what have you, I don't really want those cached. So I specify the different file extensions I want. So when we run that, it's going to populate that service worker file. And if we look at that file now, and this SW precache was made by Google, you can see it has a ton of crap in it. The service worker file can become a, a bit of a nightmare. So edit with caution. What it does for precaching is it gets your file and then it takes a, uh, whatchamacallit, a, a key for that file, like a, that's, I don't know. It's basically a representation of the state of that file. So if your file changes, it'll make a different number here and that's how it invalidates cache. And you'll see when it loads, it does the cache validation thing where it does like main.css, uh, question mark SW precache equals in that number. So that's how it handles cache busting essentially. So now when we go to our site, and you notice I reloaded the page, but it didn't change this cache storage down here. If I reload the DevTools, it'll be there. So the DevTools are still a little buggy on the PLA stuff. Now if I look, SW Precache, it's preloading all of these assets. And you see it loads the file and then question mark SW Precache in that long number. So now if I go back to my service worker and go offline and hit reload, 
the page reloads and you get no dinosaur because all the assets to make that page are, are being fetched by the service worker. So that's really cool. Now bear in mind this site still doesn't really work. If I try to do a search, it won't work. The map is showing a map because it's getting those tiles from the regular browser cache because my tiles have an, a future expiry date. If I had in my dev tools uh, no caching, it wouldn't show anything there. Uh, and if I zoom in on the map any, it's going to quickly get to an area that doesn't have tiles pre-cached and won't draw. So it doesn't really work. But what you can do, you see how I've gone offline. I have this message on top. You're currently offline, yada, yada, yada. And if I go back online, it disappears. What that code looks like is I've just got a little view component. And it looks for the online... Uh, method <laughs> I just make up words we'll call it method method of the navigator object and if it's there and I'm, I'm pretty sure online is is fairly widely supported but I'm, I'm checking to make sure it's there anyway when this uh, module component loads it sets online to true if online's a navigator it'll check online and if it's false it'll set that online to false and that's what it checks to see is there before it renders that that purple block with the warning then I look for I take the window event online and offline and if online fires then uh, online is set to true if offline fires online is set to false so that way if they if they load this as a poire but they're not on the network I don't want them to think it's actually going to work, but it, I just want to know it loads. So it shows this message saying you're currently offline. This will start working when you get back on the network. This isn't perfect. Sometimes you have what uh, Jake Archibald from Google calls Li-Fi, where it's flashing like one bar of 3G, but it's really not online. And it probably isn't going to detect that, won't detect that correctly. Also, you could be on a network that doesn't have access to the internet. It's just you're on a network, in which case it's not going to work. So it's not perfect. But it is a nice thing to show if you're doing a PWA and doing offline caching, but it's really not going to work. So that's a PWA in a nutshell, and it's really not very hard. If you, particularly if you do it like I do it. If you're trying to add push notifications, you're going to end up knee deep in uh, some interesting code. But it's not very hard to add. So if you have HTTPS support on your site already, it's pretty straightforward. And it does add some benefits. It'll load faster uh, because stuff is being pre-cached by the service worker. It'll load offline, even though it may or may not exactly work. It's a little bit nicer than seeing the dinosaur when you try to load it. And it'll prompt users to install to their home screen, which is also very nice. So that's a PWA in a nutshell. It's not too bad. I'm giving it a thumbs up. The only downers I see right now is you need to be careful. Uh, I saw a YouTube video of some poor dude screwed up his uh, service worker and ended up with like an uninstallable zombie service worker. <laughs> That was just out there forever. It's like six months later and he's still getting error logs on his server about it. You have to be careful and it makes debugging a little trickier. Uh, you notice the dev tools don't exactly work right. And I've noticed with a service worker, because how it does cache it, sometimes a, a reload message from your live reload server under development reloads your page and sometimes it doesn't which is a little strange so there are some quirks with it particularly when you're developing but overall it adds some nice benefits and it's really simple to add to your existing apps uh hope you enjoyed that i will see you later bye bye